So I've seen amputations happen. I've taken fellow coworkers to the hospital. I've seen surgeries and non-workable hands after table saw accidents. So knowing this, why would I not have a riving knife in my own table saw? Well, let's go take a look. For everyone who's been asking why I haven't built anything lately, it's because I've been really busy. But I just finished this drawing. I just got the lumber in. I'm about to start building it. So if you want to watch this come to life, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Okay, so I'm going to make this quick because let's be real. No one really wants to watch a safety video, but stick with me to the end and you're going to find out why I'm taking the time to address this important topic. So why did I not have a riding knife in my last video? Well, this is a shared space. We are making custom furniture for other people. And just before I went to use the saw, Jedi was making a video as well, and he was making cross cuts. And the riding knife didn't fit in the sled. So I came up and I did notice that it wasn't in, but I didn't find it and put it in because I knew that I was just gonna be removing a small amount of material on the end of the board, and it wasn't gonna be an issue for me. Um, but I can be better, probably should have found it, stuck it back in there just to be safe and set a good example for everyone. Uh, so uh, yeah, I'm gonna work on that. So what is a riving knife? Well, a riving knife was designed to keep you safe. It helps prevent kickback. It's a thin piece of metal that rides in the arbor behind the blade. It's slightly thinner than the thickness of your blade. A lot of times lumber yards or sawmills will expedite the drying process of their lumber and this results in a lot of moisture content built up in the center. So the more central your cut is and the thicker your material is, the more likely your lumber is going to pinch your blade. And if the riving knife isn't there to stop it and act as a wedge, then it will pinch the blade which will project it back at you and it can hurt you in the worst case scenario, it can drag your fingers through as well. So use your riving knife, it's very important. So why would anyone wanna remove such a key safety feature? Well, one of the reasons is excessive friction. More often than not, when the wood movement tries to collapse in on your blade, it's not enough to cause kickback, but it's enough to grab that riving knife and cause friction as you push it. The result is more wear and tear on your body. Now in small shops or small projects, it's not a big deal, just push through it. But when you're working in a high production shop, making furniture or cabinetry or whatever all day, that can get really taxing on your body when you're pushing several hundred board feet through all day every day. So most shops will end up removing it. I'm not saying that they should, but they do. Now is this excessive wear and tear and friction worth sacrificing your safety and removing your riding knife? Mark Spagnolo helped me out. Hell no. A few other circumstances where somebody might remove a riving knife. Let's say you're cutting dados. You obviously cannot have a riving knife in there if you're cutting dados. Using a cross cut sled. A lot of flooring guys like to use table saws for drop cuts when they're making a cut in the center of a board. I wouldn't recommend doing that. It's not very safe, but they do do it. Lastly, if you're changing out your blade to a thin curved blade and the riving knife is now thicker than your blade, that actually makes it more dangerous to use a riving knife than it is to have a riving knife in there. So make sure that your blade is always slightly thicker than your riving knife, otherwise you're just gonna be put in a more dangerous situation. First example is, if I'm gonna be making a cut and I know that I need to remove several inches off the waist side of my board, I'm not gonna cut that on the table saw. I'm gonna go to the bandsaw first and I'm gonna get it within a quarter of an inch and I'm gonna do my final cut on the table saw. This is gonna keep you much safer and the chances of a quarter of an inch or an eighth of an inch of waste pinching the blade hard enough to kick back, probably not gonna happen. Another really good tip for keeping you safe is to use a feather board. As long as this is jointed and this is already cut, you can use a, you can use a feather board, push against your material, and this will help with any kickback happening as well. You never want to place your feather board, however, past the blade. It always needs to be in the front of the blade. I have seen people try to set it up to be over here or even over here, and you never want to do that because then you're just pressing your waste material into the blade. If I'm doing a cut that might be dangerous, like removing several inches off and not doing the bands off first, and I'm not sure if this is going to close in on my blade and try to bind, with or without the riving knife, with or without the scooter stick, I'm still gonna be in a safe position where I can turn off the table saw. I'm gonna be holding down a little bit harder. I'm definitely gonna have a push block in place. As soon as you get your cut through the end of the blade, you can usually see it moving if it's going to. 
So watch for that and use your senses to help better prepare you for something that might go wrong. You really have to be in tune with your tools. So let's all be safe. Let's use our rising knife. Let's build cool stuff. And let's, uh, let's set good examples and, and help each other out. All right, thanks for watching.